So Nettie Hume talking about active hope. Thanks, Kit. And thanks, Mary and others, for inviting me. It's been great listening to hear, hearing what all you're doing and great work. It's really, really good. Um, I'd like to start with a very short poem, if I may, by Terry Tempest Williams, because it helps to illustrate what Active Hope is about. Soul and soil are not separate. Neither are wind and spirit nor water and tears. We are eroding and evolving at once, like the red rock landscape that's before me. And our grief is our love. And our love will be our undoing as we quietly disengage from the collective madness of the patriarchal mind that says aggression is the way forward. So my story, just very briefly about Active Hope is after about 40 years of working in various parts of community services, um, as I like to say, mopping up after capitalism, you, know, <laughs> you, you get very tired. So, um, living through those decades of neoliberalism and economic rationalism, where people are told that economy is the main thing we don't have community, we have economy, we're not citizens, we're consumers. And all the time, just watching the destruction of our beloved earth. I came to my seventh decade and I thought, well, what do I really want to do with the time that I've got left? How can I be of service? And uh, previously I'd worked in social welfare and I was celebrant doing weddings and funerals and doing training of community service workers in TAFE. You know, those sort of jobs where, you know, you're working with people in broken systems and training them to go out and work in other broken systems. It's, it's pretty tough and it's very draining. So the what I really would like to do is somehow do workshops or gatherings uh, where people could express their anxiety about what's happening to the world because I was coming across that a lot anecdotally eco anxiety they call it now or eco grief and I had to think about it and being a practice trainer and um, course designer I thought well how would I do it I thought, start with gratitude because gratitude is very grounding it's also a subversive act in our current um, consumerist society because if you're full of gratitude you're not needing to fill up that hole with consumer goods or addictions or distractions or whatever. And then like all good trainers, I got onto the internet and I wonder what other people are doing. And I found Joanna Macy. And I tell you, I couldn't believe it. It was all there. And it had been for like four decades. And I don't know how I missed that memo. But I think it must be because uh, I was working in the social justice field, not in the environmental activism field. So somehow it kind of had missed me. The active hope is a practical application of um, I think called deep ecology. And deep ecology can be defined as uh, a way of viewing the world where Western science meets indigenous wisdoms. And active hope is a practical application of that. Um, Joanna Macy worked with John Seed, who's an Australian and some other people and came up with this active hope spiral, which has four stations. Starts with gratitude, that I was right on track there. Um, moves on to um, honouring the feelings you feel for the world. And this is coming from this idea that because we're not just connected to nature, we are nature. Or to quote one of my favourite Aboriginal elders, Mary Graham, we all come from the land. And the land provides for all our needs and all we need to do is look after the land in reciprocal relationship, which is why when we are witnessing what we're witnessing, the destruction, it's our own body. And that's why we feel that grief within. You know, we feel the cry of Mother Earth inside. 
You could also quote another elder from Arnhem Land, Bill Nidja, who said, the earth made humans so she could have a tongue with which to express. So this is all part of honouring our feelings to the world so that we're not repressing. And some people say, oh, but I don't want to do that because I think when I start crying, I won't stop. But actually what you find is it's very liberating, particularly if you're being witnessed and it's in a safe sort of environment. And what that does then is allow you to go on to the next station, the third station, which is looking with new eyes or fresh eyes, or I'd like to say with ancient eyes. So you're bringing in deep ecology perspectives of deep time, yeah. um, connection to nature. And at that part of the spiral, I bring in now um, the Aboriginal women up at North East, um, Northwest Island mm -hmm. land, Yulnu people. Mm -hmm. um, the gay wool group of women, I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but they've, they've given us this gift, which is a book called Song Spirals. And um, there's five song spirals that they're sharing with us. And they were motivated because they were in distress about what they're seeing, destruction to country. And their plea is if only everyone could love the earth like we would, then we wouldn't be destroying it. So, um, and then that leads on to going forth. So the idea is um, active hope and to be it borrows bits from resilience psychology, um, mm -hmm. Buddhism, and Indigenous wisdoms and packages it up together. So every Sunday at five o'clock, I offer a free online quick trip around the Active Hope Spiral. And to be honest, I do it for myself. Self-interest is always the best motivator, is it not? And that's because I use it as an anchor for myself and also keeps me in the zone. And I just... It's like an open door policy. Anyone can join me anytime. I have about 60 people on my email list. Sometimes a couple of people, me and one other person, usually about three or five. The most I've ever had is seven. So it actually creates a nice intimate um, sharing. And uh, another shout out to um, the elders, Aboriginal elders that I'm bringing in now, mm -hmm. because I really feel like, hey, you want to talk about deep time? or deep ecology, here we are on this ancient land with the longest you know, living ancient civilization who still have the stories that they've been passing down mouth to mouth through songs and stories for generations were untold thousands and thousands yeah. of years. So, you know, we have it and it's so rich and, oh, my God, the grace and the generosity of those Aboriginal women sharing that deep knowledge despite everything that has happened in that last couple of hundred years it just blows my mind to be honest so more honor and respect to them uh, in particular uh, we've got Anna Paulina from the Kimberleys Mary Graham I mentioned from the Gold Coast and a young emerging elder Ella Noah Bancroft who is very big on reminding us that we're all indigenous to the planet um, and I think that's really laudable. Um, the other thing that um, frames it is uh, the three stories of our time. Joanna Macy talks about this could be useful um, for transition um, groups. The first story is business as usual. So that's that whole um, capitalist, uh, hyper-individualist, uh, consumerist, uh, echno all those words where the earth is seen as something to plunder. It's a resource. It's something for us to take what we want, what we think we need without thought of any consequence. And it's also a sewer to then spew back the pollution or the stuff we don't want. And of course, that's not sustainable. Hello, we know this. Um, and the evidence is all there to be seen. And so that leads to the second story, which is the great unraveling. And that's where we are now, where things are, are unraveling at a really rapid pace. Uh, climate change, of course, is taking over everything, but you can look at all the um, all our social institutions, health, education. I can say any measure you want to choose and you can see how devalued everything has become. Good news if you like, is that we live in very exciting times, very vulnerable times, very fragile times, but there is a, a great turning that's happening. 
And this is um, Joanna Macy talks about, if you look back in time with evolution, when a species is under threat for extinction, there's two choices. One is to stay the same and then become extinct. The other is to evolve, which means to adapt or change. And she believes that we're at this adapting, changing part. And if you, you don't hear about this on the mainstream media or whatever, but at any one point in time, there are literally millions and millions of organisations like Transition Australia around the globe, all working towards how to live more sustainably. So I tend to think whatever you think or believe has got us in this mess that we're in, or whatever you think or believe is going to happen next, um, whether it's apocalypse or doomsday thing or whatever, we need to be working towards how we want to live. And that's where active hope comes in. It's not hope like, oh, wishes, I, I wish for blah, blah. It's more like what you hope to see in the world, and that's your intention, and then how you make that active. So transition groups are a perfect example of that, of um, the hope that, you know, the belief that we can live a better way, that's more in tune and um, in harmony and how we're going to do it. And all this is good for adaptation because we don't know what's coming. So, Nettie, well, you have another we... minute. Oh, another minute. Yep. Uh, oh, I was going to throw in. Yes, the deep ecology. So I'm now calling it um, falling in love with the world. And I'm pinching that from a couple of women who are running um, an, an Active Hope Spiral group. I think it's the first Wednesday every month in Coburg at the Reynard Neighbourhood Health Centre. So there's lots of little groups springing up, actually, which is quite interesting. Um, and that's a paraphrase from uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, who said, you know, if people could fall in love with the earth, maybe they'd look after it more. Or as Joanna Macy says, if people could extend their self-interest and see the earth as an extension of themselves, which we are, then maybe they would take the actions that are required. But who knows? Okay, thus endeth my thing. Thanks for listening.